way I want to run this channel is to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. And there's nothing good about the stormwater issue that we have on this job. It's bad and it's ugly, and I'll show you. Okay, so I way underestimated the stormwater, and yeah. these are the far end of the four inch drains I put in behind a retaining wall, and they're working. Uh, you see water has come out, water's coming out of there and coming down through here. And then uh, the other two are over there on that side. But this is what I wanna show you. Man, there, there is a lot of storm water to contend with on this job site. And this is just, this primarily is just from one storm event. Uh, all that water come across well, it didn't come across the wall. It came underneath the wall and around the wall. These two four inch lines that go all the way behind the wall, there's no way that it can handle all that storm water that's coming down through there. So that's the bad and the ugly. And like I said, there's not much good about that. So we'll walk up here and look at what the plan is for uh, catching that storm water and what we're gonna do with it. So all that storm water that's generated there, it goes up almost to that, well, to that house, and all that field area over to the county road, or city road, and all this parking lot area. All that water has to come down to, to here and find its way across this brand new playground area. And uh, so, like I said, those four inch drains that we put behind that wall, no way can handle all that water so we had a guy come by look at this yesterday he is a general contractor for commercial work uh, commercial buildings parking lots and um, he's going to look at the topo map for this property and kind of generate an idea how much water we're actually looking at and what size pipes we need to fix this situation so a lot of that water from the field comes right down here and collects in this corner so the plan is to put a catch basin, concrete catch basin right here, and then put a hard pipe, this will be dug out, and put a hard pipe in down to this corner over here. And then put another catch basin right in this area. So we'll have that catch basin coming down here with a hard pipe, into this catch basin going down across the playground underneath it, and out the back side of that uh, bank that where all that field dirt is What's the bad part is Part of this retaining wall has to come out. I'm dreading that Removing that retaining wall area putting the pipe underneath it and then rebuilding that retaining wall area That's gonna be a job And this is the lower side of that I mentioned that second catch basin goes there pipe coming into it and then coming out here This is the section of retaining wall that has come out that block that block and those three caps will have to come off and then rebuild that after I get that pipe in. Yeah, it'd be nice to have the 308 here, but I don't. Cat 304 is getting it done, though. Okay, it's the little things in life that slow us down a little bit. This hook right here is too small to go into those hooks to pick these blocks up. It was working, it would go in there, but it's hard to get back out. So, like I said, it's the simple things that we got to change around. So what I'm going to do is just take another hook and replace that one. Then I'll be able to do that a lot better. I'm not sure how this is going to work. It's going to be interesting to watch, though.
and the part we're not really looking forward to is this is a brand new fence but this section of fence is going to come out and i'm pretty sure it's held together with screws take these boards off take those down and then the part i'm really not looking forward to is taking this part of this retaining wall down that we built We're making some progress now. I got this first catch basin underway, and I've got that dug out. I got my dimensions and and using Trimble Earthworks to get me down to the right grade. But the challenge was, and I showed the first part of that was getting this retaining wall out. That really broke my <laughs> that really broke my heart to have to tear that retaining wall part out and and get that out. So we're working on that now. And uh, I've got a fellow here with me. His name is Jermaine, and Jermaine reached out to me. Been watching the channel. Uh, try to start digging for, for a little bit and he reached out to me and said he's in the Dalton area and I'm in the Ringgold area on this particular job working so he said he's willing to work so he's here and uh, Jermaine has got an Instagram account named uh, The Gravel Driveway Company. That's actually the company's name too. Gravel Driveway Company. He started his own business, the Gravel Driveway Company and uh, so he's getting started so you're going to say a little bit about that. We do gravel driveways, that's what we focus on. Um, there's really not much to say, it's plain and simple. <laughs> we repair and construct gravel driveways and uh, we've worked out a three-year uh, maintenance plan with our, with our new gravel driveways and even repairs if they go do a full repair and allow us to fix everything the water drainage etc then we'll go ahead and give them the maintenance plan as well for three years but that's really it we want to focus on gravel driveways retaining walls we're on two retaining wall jobs right now and um, retaining walls are fun drainage systems are fun and all those tie into actually doing gravel driveways, but yeah. we want to focus on gravel roads and driveways and parking pads, et cetera, and getting the water to flow correctly and showing people with proper maintenance, you don't have to just dump gravel every year, every six months, like people, some people are used to. So I'm gonna get back to digging and Jermaine's gonna take the camera here for a few minutes and do a little bit of, I've never had this before. I've never had anybody actually running the camera for me, so I'm not sure what we're gonna end up with, but uh, well, here we go. I'm excited. So I've explained this before in other videos where I'm using Trimble Earthworks, but basically what I'm doing is I've set my teeth down on the ground there, and that's gonna be my finished elevation. It's gonna be the height of my catch basins. So once I set that benchmark, I come back to the computer and I'm gonna set a 36 inch offset, meaning that I'm gonna be 30, by the bottom of my catch basin, it's gonna be 36 inches deeper than my benchmark there. So that's what I'm doing now is just setting up the computer so that I know where I'm at when I'm digging this catch basin hole. said he was coming to help so here he goes i'm putting him to work <laughs> he's gonna i'm gonna put you on time lapse and watch you move this dirt uh across the back side of the hill he's gonna scoop it out take it away and i'm gonna keep pushing it back here too
we're going to try is because Jermaine's getting the chain and the clevis to put on the back of the the, the uh, stick there. But what the situation is, is these catch basins don't have any way around the top or inside to uh, pick them up. The way to pick them up is on the back. Well, now let me take that back. There is chain indentions right here, all the way on the four corners. But there are hooks on the back so what we're going <laughs> what we're going it's jermaine's idea if it don't work <laughs> so so we're going to pick them up by these hooks we're going to carry it over to the hole set it down outside the hole and then <laughs> roll it back into the hole we'll see what happens boom down Pick your blade up and back up. Oh, oh, if I had a... Good. That's good. A lot of progress today this is the end of day one and uh jermaine helped me get this catch basin set and that's ready to it's marked ready for the knockout and i hadn't really explained what i'm doing right here uh i'm going to use these 245s so i'll come straight out of the catch basin there it'll drop down and then i added that other 45 to it which will bring it right straight out because and the reason I did that straight out of the catch basin is because I've got to get below grade for this retaining wall. I've got to get down into here so that I can uh, put some rock back over the top of the pipe and pack that in good so that I can get my, my retaining wall block back in here and fix all that back. I got the ditch dug for this uh, run of 18 inch pipe and that's on a 1% grade uh, from the top here. Well, the catch basin is it uh daylights out down there and then i've got a end wall that i'll put on that and then haven't yet decided what i'm going to do as far as uh slowing the water down and, and uh diffusing it obviously it's going to involve some riprap i've got an order of riprap coming good morning i made it back uh we've got to get a lot of work done today today's friday and i'd like to have a lot of this done at least enough of it done to where if they get a heavy storm here this storm drain system will handle the water not flood the uh not flood the playground again so we don't want that to happen especially with school starting monday yeah school starts monday so i need to get some stuff done let's get to work what i'm gonna work on is getting that catch basin in right there by that light pole get that in get this ditch dug across the and cut that pavement get that ditch dug across here tie that ditch into this catch basin here and get that pipe in and get this pipe in if i can get all that done today that would be a blessing uh, that way we can at least carry the water away from this playground if we get a storm over the weekend so let's get busy while that saw is warming up let me explain my lines here so you can see i took my time on this left hand line over here and got a really good straight edge that's going to be the finished edge so i want that to be really good and straight and a clean cut because that's what's going to be seen this one over here not too worried about it i just need to cut somewhere close to that so i can dig this pavement out right here because all this is going to be covered with concrete so this is not going to be seen this will be seen this edge
All right, I got all that trench dug out now, the, well, the asphalt anyway, where I cut. Now then I'm gonna start digging this uh, catch basin hole and I'll use Trimble Earthworks to get my benchmark right here. Set myself a 40 inch offset to dig this with. 36 inches is the uh, box and then a four inch uh, subgrade so that I can level rock. Eddie and I have got this uh, catch basin hole dug out now and got the rock in there and got it leveled. So uh, go up there and hook up to that catch basin, the one over there on the right, the other one's a head wall on the left. Bring that catch basin down here and I'll uh, turn this back on and we'll get ready to set it. Second time was a charm, so we got it in there now. I think I need to turn it just a little bit so my pipe's gonna come out straight. But other than that, uh, we'll check it for level and start digging the hole, or start digging the ditch. Started digging this ditch now, after I got the uh, catch basin in, started digging the ditch. So, I have a math question for you. So send me a comment in the comment section there what you think this number would be. So the distance between this box and that catch basin down there is 44 feet. I know that the elevation change is from the bottom of that box to the bottom of that box is 15 inches. So in order for me to start at this box and dig a steady slope down to this second box, what percent slope should I be digging at? Let's see what you think. A little update where we are now. I've got this uh, ditch all the way dug now, and that's the catch basin up by that light pole, the first catch basin. And now this ditch is dug all the way down to second catch basin. And Jimmy has got the hole knocked in this one already and started on the other one. There's a lot of different ways I've saw and heard to fix these uh, knockouts, but what option we've taken is the old sledgehammer jimmy smashed his finger off. <laughs> uh, i was watching a video on how to do this on digging life 21's channel and he used a concrete uh, drill and drilled holes all the way around it and then knocked it out 
which that's effective but then in the comment on that video somebody had commented to him to use a concrete saw and cut a square hole looking back i wish i had taken that advice when these were on the ground i should have turned it up sideways and scored those where the pipe goes and then knocked them out with the hammer been a lot easier but jimmy is good hard at it you got me. <laughs> show us how to do it jimmy what we did i'll use the back as an example we made an orange mark where the pipe goes on the outside and that's what he's using as a template is that orange mark uh, to chip that out around that outside so he's going pretty good now that the main hole's knocked out jimmy whining a while ago he mashed his little finger or something i didn't see a lick of blood but it hurt so bad <laughs> All right, we'll get these holes knocked out and uh, start putting some pipe together. If I ain't said it yet, it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaking. This might be interesting. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> day two got the last pipe in the ground down at the end and the bottom dropped out it is poor was pouring down rain slacking off now like this morning i said i'd be happy and blessed if i got the catch basin in up there and this line dug here this pipe in and this pipe in so that's exactly what we got done today and uh yeah so playground's not going to flood if we get some heavy rain over the weekend, this ditch will uh, catch the water, bring it down into here, and go out down to the end. It's not going to run through the pipes, obviously, because the concrete around this catch basin and around that catch basin has not been made. But anyway, it will carry the water. The ditch will carry the water out to where it needs to go. See y'all Monday morning. Well, it is a rainy Sunday morning, and I uh, finished that job up a few weeks ago. And it turned out to be a really nice job. The retaining wall turned out great. I was really pleased with how that looks. The, the stormwater issue was a little bit uh, frustrating, but we got that figured out and got all that system in. Stay tuned for part two of that uh, 
series two, uh, we'll finish up that that uh, we'll finish up that stormwater system and take a look at it. I want to speak just a minute about a message about wisdom, and it's starting to rain, so I'll make this quick. Uh, so talking about worldly wisdom and godly wisdom, worldly wisdom will lead us in a path of uh, selfishness and desire to get ahead no matter what and to push somebody else out of the way to get what we want. Godly wisdom, on the other hand, teaches us to put others first. To, to Godly wisdom teaches us to be humble and kind. And the wisdom of God leads to eternal life. And the wisdom of the world just leads to destruction and, and pride and arrogance. And so I want to say just a few just a few passages of Scripture and speak just a minute on them. So the first passage I'd speak about is in Job 28, verse 28. And it says, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So the very first passage there talks that if we will turn away from evil and to fear the Lord, and I'm not talking about a frightening fear, I'm talking about a reverent fear, having a, a reverent fear uh, of of God. And and there's people in your life, there's people mine who I fear in a reverent way. And one of those people was my papa. It wasn't that I was afraid of him. But I had a respectful fear of my papa because he meant so much to me and, and what he thought of me was very important. So that's what I'm trying to explain about that reverent fear. Um, most of all because I didn't want to hurt him. I didn't want to do anything to, to but I did. There was a lot of things in my life that he found out about that that wasn't uh, very pleasing to him. And um, so, so that's what I'm talking about, that reverent fear. The next one is in James uh, chapter 3, verse 17. He says, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and, and good fruit, and impartial and sincere. That describes godly wisdom. That des describes a wisdom that comes from God and that he desires from us. The wisdom of the world uh, teaches us to steal, kill, and destroy. Do, do whatever it takes uh, to get ahead and get that next dollar and to cheat somebody out of something. But... The wisdom of God is so much different than that. Then in Proverbs 4, 6, and 7, it says, Do not forsake the wisdom, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. Wisdom is supreme. Therefore, get wisdom. Though it cost all you have, get understanding. That is the plea and the desire uh, the Scripture is talking about there to obtain this wisdom that God is talking about. And then I'll finish in Proverbs 16, 16. It says this, How much better to get wisdom... And that's talking about godly wisdom, not worldly wisdom. How much better to get wisdom than gold, to choose understanding rather than silver. That ending with that passage of Scripture tells us to pursue the things that are of God, godly wisdom, rather than to pursue the, the worldly riches that are here on this earth. And I'm thankful the Lord's blessed me with a great business and this excavation work, and you, you've seen a lot of the work that I do. And, and I'm blessed, and uh, God has really favored me in this business. But I keep that in perspective. Um, I generally work five days a week, eight hours a day. I'm not pursuing wealth of this world. I'm pursuing a, a, an income and a, and a revenue source that I enjoy that provides for my family. And generally, I don't work on Saturdays and Sundays um, because I consider that family time. That's time for me to spend with my family, and I'm thankful for that. And I want to have the right perspective in life when it comes to work and finances and pursue that godly wisdom that leads us in the right path. I hope that you're a believer of Jesus Christ. I hope that you're trusting in him this morning. Uh, I hope this message finds you and encourages you and blesses you. And, and I pray that you'd come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior if you haven't done that already. So God bless. I appreciate you watching. If you enjoy the videos, give us a big old fat thumbs up. I always appreciate the comments, and thank you for your support of this channel. Thanks, and God bless.